When it comes to Master Chief's voice, Steve Downs is, well, he's down with it. Uh... Now, look at this sorry, miserable, squashed thing. Can anybody tell me what's wrong with this picture? So, ladies and gentlemen, do we get a fan boner about the new Halo TV show, which is going to be out on Paramount Plus in the next couple of weeks? Should we temper our expectations or should we just get our joysticks in place and have a good, long, hard, well, you know what I'm talking about, about Master Chief in his own TV series? Well, hold those thoughts because we're going to do a video reaction to the brand new Halo trailer, which dropped over eight hours ago. I had no idea, but funny enough, it coincides with something else, which I accidentally heard about this morning. So without further ado, let's go over and watch the brand new Halo trailer, which uh, premiered eight hours ago, like I said. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna see <laughs> how, how bad this is gonna be, go away. Team, on me. On me, because I'm Australian. There's something out there. Uh-oh. Just beyond our reach. Why do we have a female narrating this? It's like... Opening your eyes. For the first time... I saw your face. Living in the dark. Your rage. I'm trying to Lies stay awake. You. Here we go. Rage. It's all I have left. That has got to be the worst hairstyle I've ever seen. The covenant will not stop. Australia's well, hottest talented actress. Everything. Is that Sergeant Johnson? Sacrifice. No. Are you willing to sacrifice? No. What's the point in saving humanity if we're going to give up our own? I'm interested in finding a way to... Yeah. Let's rely on Dr. Halsey moving forward. So we are one minute, nine seconds into this trailer. I'm just seeing loads of chicks, a lot of exposition. I want to see, like... Men kicking ass, men and females together in the war zone, kicking ass with the Covenant. Why am I not seeing that, people? Is there something wrong with this picture? Thinking of William Defense from falling down. The truth could bring us all down. There is something within us. Sergeant Johnson, that's got to be him, right? That looks like him. Something sacred. Something worth protecting. Is she meant to be Miranda Keys? I don't know if that's Olivia Olive Gray. It looks like her, but I'll I'll get to that in a little while. But why are we getting these really contrived? Oh my god, look at that! Oh, here we go. There is. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Wow. Have a look at Have a look at this. Look at that. This looks like the flood. I have to agree with somebody. It looks like the flood. This has got to be the laziest contrived action set I've seen. This set piece right here. She's war. I mean, oh my God. Back in the days when you made action movies, they really put a lot of thought, a lot of time, a lot of planning an action scene. But this is like. All right, love, stand there. Just walk forwards and look really intimidating. Look really menacing. Boring. Ah, oh. I know who that guy is. Silver Team, on me.
You forgot your parachute, Chief! Oh, yeah. ah! <laughs> it's just us. But Master Chief, it's not just you. We had lots of women in this trailer. Again, I would like this show to be really, really good. That's the heartbreaking thing about it. And maybe a few years ago, before they kept delaying the process of making this into a live action adaptation, it could have been really good. But you know, we had that writer's strike in 2008. And just like the pandemic, I think it was designed to reset the course of the narrative going forward. I think Hollywood knew for a long, long time that they were going to do this course correction over months and months and years and years of time. They have to wait for certain things to fall into place. And I reckon that whatever early conceptions they had of a Halo TV series, a live action version of, they just kind of put some ideas in hold. And now, now we're getting an, an Asian chick from Australia with the worst haircut I've ever seen. And she's probably a good actress, but oh my God, I just have, I don't know. I'm gonna watch this show, but I'm not gonna pay for the uh, privilege. I'm just gonna sell the high seas, yikes. And that's it. I'm gonna know uh, <laughs> how I feel about this. But the reason why I talk about this trailer today is because the Rotten Tomato scores are out, folks. Now this is based, I believe, on 15 reviews. Uh, and uh, wow, shall we go through these quickly? Because I'm kind of curious to see um, what's been said. So Kate Sanchez, Halo 2022 works for me. And I hope it works for you. Or at the very least, you open yourself to allowing a new story to be told for a franchise we all hold dear. Now, she might be a gamer. I mean, she works for But Why Though A Geek Community, or maybe that's her handle. Um, Rollin Bishop, having seen roughly two hours of Halo, <laughs> okay, I am confident enough in it to say that I will be sticking around to finish the fights. Clint Worthington, no relation to Sam. The frustrating thing about Halo is that it tries to serve two masters. Die-hard Halo fans and noobs who are used to do who are used to the normal rhythms of sci-fi streaming series and doesn't quite please either. Brad Lang, the series, the result is a series that manages to evoke many of the core themes and the visuals of the video games while also delivering a compelling narrative. I'll say one thing, Brad, when I was watching that trailer, nothing about the narrative seemed compelling to me. A lot of messaging, a lot of ideology, a lot of identity politics. You just can't have a sci-fi show and just have diversity in that cast, but not focusing heavily on that. That's what I kept seeing. Uh, Kevin J uh, Fox Jr., will it end up being propagandistic? Propaganda, oh my God, how do you say this word? Propagandaistic and committing to an idea that some of the excesses of warfare are necessary or acceptable. Almost definitely, but, I'll probably be a, but it'll probably be a fun ride and hopefully a good story. Um, Darren, Fe uh, Darren Frenich, this drama comes on strong with ambient techno babble and bureaucratic realism. It's as thrilling as a meeting. <laughs> Darren, I completely sympathize with you. And yes, I have sat in some boring ass meetings over my time in working for various offices in the UK. So I know what he means. Ben Travers of IndieWire. It's exactly what you expect. While Halo features a few minor pivots in these early hours, there's very little to spoil and even less to spark curiosity that's not already present. But this one kind of caught my eye uh, from Kyla Cobb. But before I get to her, let's see what Dan Flemberg, this is the man who liked everything's all white, if I remember that correctly. Boasting no technological innovation to speak of, few performances to offer meaningful grounding, and only limited action thrills. Halo is aggressively forgettable, which is at least several steps up from bad. Oh, ouch. Uh, right, so Kyla Cobb, this adaptation offers lots of explanations and fun effects, but little else. 
Halo has the potential to be a good time, but at least in its first episodes, it's not quite there yet. Now, she works for TheDecider.com, and this is the actual quote I highlighted. Even after two hours, characters like Master Chief, Quan, Dr. Halsey, Natasha McAlone, and Miranda Keys, Olive Gray, feel like vague acquaintances. It's a lot of people walking around and explaining plot points. Oh my God. We're embracing that now, are we, folks? Let's walk around and let's talk because we don't have time for the action. And even when bigger narrative choices are made, Halo often goes with the most confusing option. A bit like Laura Dern in The Last Jedi when she stood there barking orders. <laughs> <laughs> at the Juan Solo replacement and yeah Oliver um Jake oh what's the guy's name again Oscar Isaac yeah she's barking orders at him he's like ah what did the purple head should just say I thought that was very interesting now the reason why I focus on Miranda Keys guess what they've done they've given her a race swap so in the video games especially the remastered version Miranda Keys and I'm not pulling this one out of my ass I can go right here She's a 27-year-old white female with brown hair and green eyes. Now, Olive Gray, she's got two very famous parents. Well, they're famous in the music business, so nepotism knows no bounds. So this is your Miranda Keys. And I don't know how old she is, 1994? Well, okay, so what's her current age? I'm, I'm too, I, it's, right, she's got to be less than the character's age at the moment. And Miranda Keys, if you know anything about her, She's kind of like a kick-ass uh, naval officer in space, in the UNSC, and she's very she's got a very commanding presence. I can't see this chick here offering a commanding presence of authority in the military. It doesn't work for me. And yeah, we haven't seen a single episode yet, but judging on his reactions, I've got to wonder what's really going on. Now, I want to go to this guy here, Cody Leach. He's actually seen the first two episodes. He uploaded this. Uh, I think uh, probably about uh, eight hours ago as well, maybe less. I'm just going to play this bit here because, um, and again, this guy um, has some familiarity with the games. He hasn't played them from what I, I can tell. Um, but let's just listen to what he has to say because this is thought was pretty, pretty cool. In my limited experience with Halo, I have never seen before. They've always just kind of been background noise where we always focus on Master Chief and his journey. And I think it was really interesting how they start to put a spotlight on some of the things going on behind the scenes that maybe Master Chief doesn't completely line up with, maybe some things that things that he flat out doesn't agree with, and start to raise some questions about whether or not he's gonna take that bullshit or not. We also get introduced to this character, Quan, who has kind of become, by the second episode, a co-lead with Master Chief. Now, Master Chief still holds most of the screen time, so again, I don't know if that will change. See what I mean? Holds most of the screen time, and then Quan comes in. And Quan is going to be the focus of attention because why does everything have to be about the female? Why can't it just be about something else? About maybe the stakes of play for the world? Why does a woman have to hold the key to everything? I don't get it. Yes, I know women gave birth to us. That makes them the stronger sex in my opinion. But oh my God, why, why does it come down to this? Why? <laughs> Later on in the season, I know that there was rumblings about two, three, four weeks ago where they were saying that there was going to be a female lead and Master Chief was going to be more of a side character and the internet did what the internet did and lost their shit. I don't know if that's going to be the case in episodes to come. It will be the case. In the first two episodes, Master Chief is very much the star of the show, but it's her storyline that is taking the focus. She is the one that is kind of the inciting incident for the events that this first season is going to get into. And she's the one that's starting to bring out a lot of the humanity and a lot of the characterization of Master Chief, so maybe that's what they were talking about, that she was going to be the, the narrative focus, but Master Chief thus far is still very much the focus of the show. But be Thank you very much, Cody. So that's um, an interesting point that she, I mean, look, I don't know if uh, Master Chief uh, needs to be humanized by Quan or anybody else, because Cortana tried to do that in the video games, and she probably brought out a little bit of essence of humanity in Chief, 
But why do you want to bring out his humanity? I don't understand that part. Because Master Chief is like a badass. He's out there to do one thing and one thing only. Kick the ass of the Covenant and any enemy that dares to threaten him. Or space humanity as we know it. So I liked Cody's impressions here. Um, go and watch his review actually. He, it was a good review from what I saw uh, initially of, of, of this point. I don't want to spoil me. Don't, don't want to be spoiled too much. I do want to watch the first two episodes at least. Um, but it's interesting that the first two episodes seem to lean heavily. It's, it, it's going to be a bait and switch. I know my commenters who watch my channel are going to use that phrase. It's a bait and switch, Jace. That's what it's going to be. And I have a funny feeling you're going to be right. That's why the first two episodes have to be double barreled with a lot of Master Chief. It's his focus. It's his story. But I bet you the episodes afterwards is going to be on the fawning females and walking around being all powerful because I've had no agency that haven't earned it. We probably won't get flashbacks. So maybe Quan, maybe Master Chief, maybe that their, their, their dynamic could be really good. And if she's not insufferable, and I don't see insufferability in her performance yet, but it could happen, then I might put up with that. Will I accept it? No, because Hollywood is dumb and this is what Hollywood wants to do. So folks, if you enjoyed my reaction today, my furious reaction for Halo, the TV show, which has had early reviews on Rotten Tomatoes and it's not looking good so far. So possibly it could be dead on arrival, even though it's been commissioned for a second season. So do they save any good stuff for the last? Who knows? Anyway, folks, if you enjoyed this video today, do hit the like button, do take out your Spartan rifle, and shoot the subscribe button. And on that note, I will see you, if you were me, on my next video. Stay with the Master Chief. You'll know what to do. Yes, sir, Sergeant. Thanks for the tank. He never gets me anything. Oh, I know what the ladies like.